Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to work on a Penn Center or 113 or the 40. This is the H2 variety, which is the newer version of the reel. It has the uh, the graphite carrying uh, case, and the rest of the materials inside of it are pretty much the same and identical to the uh, Penn 40 series Senators that have been around for ages. A couple of design changes on it. But uh, predominantly, the customer is telling me that he thinks that there's a skip in here. And a skip usually means that there's a broken line. So we're going to take this apart, we're going to service it, and if there's broken line, certainly we're going to remove that. So to do that, we're going to start by taking off the handle. And this is one of the design changes in the newer versus the old reels. The old reels would have a handle screw, and it would be... Uh, using one of these multi-eared uh, nuts and in this case we just have a straight up nut it's an 11 millimeter nut so we're going to go ahead and take that off and that will enable us to remove the handle the handles uh, followed by the star drag that comes off in a counterclockwise and then the uh, the ferrule washer and the ferrule. Now you're noticing I'm putting all of those pieces into my parts bucket. It's just simply the bottom of a milk, uh, milk jug. And I do that so that I know where the pieces and parts are when I go to reinstall. Next up, we'll take out the side plate screws. And one of the things to note in the side plate screws is that there is a different size, or usually a different size. You want to make sure that they're all the same. If you're working on the older pen center, models. There is a different size on the screws. Uh, this one I think is going to be the same. So we'll just take that apart. Now this reel is in good condition. It's relatively new. It's an H2 version and uh, normally I probably wouldn't see this in the shop yet. However the customer is complaining on that skip. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and find out why that is. Uh, it probably it's most likely that it's going to be line that broke off line sometimes traps itself behind the spools and the inner workings and uh, then gets into the gearing. Now I'm just looking at this quickly. I am not seeing uh, line breakage here, nor am I seeing it on this side. These are bearings. We're going to go ahead and loop the bearings while we've got this reel open. And we're going to use a, a real oil to do that. I use Real X and I just give it a healthy, healthy dose of oil. To let that set and then uh, I just check to make sure there's no fractures or scarring or anything on the, the spools and they go right back in and again this reel is looks new so uh, there must be a mechanical issue inside or at least that's what we're thinking on this uh, real uh, real bridge plate here so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe some of that lubrication that's on the, the side plate off and then we'll go ahead and remove the bridge plate. Now I'm going to take those screws and the side plate screws, put them in my bucket so we don't lose them. And then we're going to just grab these four nuts, or four screws that are on the other side of it, and um, remove those to give us access to the, uh, the gear side plate. These come out typical, just a, an anti reverse, uh, I'm sorry, counterclockwise move. The two screws up top are partially threaded screws. The two screws on the bottom should be fully threaded. The reason for that is the screws up top on the bridge are uh, riding, uh, they have springs riding on them so they don't want to get caught in the uh, threading of the, the fully threaded screws. So you want to make a note of that when you go to reinstall. Is uh, There is a difference there. Okay, then once I loosen that last one, I cut my hand and then I push the bridge plate through. Now, the reason I do that is there's an anti-reverse dog on the back here and an anti-reverse dog spring. Here's your dog and in this case the spring has actually sat in here. You can see it. It's a little coil spring. You don't want that to fly out so that's why I go ahead and cut my hand there. I'll take that and I'm going to place that in the parts bucket as well. If you lose that and you don't have extras uh, you don't have a quick uh, tune-up or a repair. You got to go order one of those online. Wait for it to ship in. Not an expensive part, but it's a part that uh, 
will prevent you from completing the, the tuna. All right, you only can take the gear side out by taking that trim ring off. And now you can remove the jack. Just unhook that. Pull out the yoke and main gear. Uh, I'm sorry, spool gear. The two springs that sit in those indentations. And then we'll pick out the drag stack here. So I'm not seeing the broken piece that uh, the customer is concerned about. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just uh, do a visual inspection here. I'm going to wipe down that side channel, which has some old grease in there. We'll go back and we'll oil that uh, bearing that's on the side plate there. I'm going to pull the spool gear off of the yoke. Just check all the teeth. Now again, this is a relatively new reel, so I don't expect to see any damage there. But again, we're looking for that maybe that small piece of line or something that got in here. And I'm not seeing it. So uh, I don't know. It, it could be that it got ground up, uh, disintegrated, uh, you know, some other way got moved out of the reel itself. But uh, at any rate, the customer will get it tuned up and uh, completed reel as a result of this uh, before it's returned to him. So uh, we'll do that. I'm going to take this sleeve, uh, gear sleeve off. I want to do that again because that, there might be a piece that's trapped under there. Normally I wouldn't do it uh, at this point because it's relatively new reel. There's no indication that there, there's a problem back there, but uh, we're going to just do that just to make sure. And you do that by pushing the pin. access hole there. Grab it with the pliers to complete the pull. And again, I'm laying things on the table here that belong in the parts bucket. And uh, we'll go ahead and put them in there just for safekeeping. Once I pull that off, I can take the gear sleeve off. So sometimes if you have a damaged gear sleeve, the same would work. And we're simply going to pull that off at this point. There's a little bit of oil and grease on there. Let's go ahead and clean that off while we're at it. But I'm not, again, I'm not seeing any broken line. So uh, I'll have to report back to the customer that we did a full service on the reel. Didn't notice any uh, broken line unless it's in this uh, drag stack here. And uh, that he should rest assured that uh, whatever caused the skip uh, has been reset. And uh, go ahead and have many happy days fishing. reinstall we grab that pin again set ourselves into the hole and I use a, a little plastic hammer here non -metallic, to uh, go reset that pin and you want to make sure that that pin is set all the way because if it's not the, um, the main gear assembly will not uh, ride over it okay here's your drag stack I'm going to reverse this out I'll show you how this drag stack sets Again, this is a relatively clean and unused reel here, so I'm not sure what the customer's problem is. Uh, I'm just going to run a cotton swab inside that just to see in case there is a little bit of breakage there. I'm going to go reset that onto the sleeve. And then this is in reverse order now. So there's seven drags, I believe. One, two, three, four. There's seven metal. One, two, four. Yep. Okay, so it's a I'm going to go in this sequence now. So it goes a fabric drag, the HD100s, the round drag, fabric, eared washer, fabric, round, fabric, eared, continuing fabric, round, eared. Now these HD100s are not lubed here, but I like to put some lube on it just to keep it fresh. I use a Cowles Universal Drag Grease. I put a little bit on each side, and as you're noticing, I'm wearing a protective glove. I like to put a little bit of that and just work it on. You want to keep these drags flexible uh, because if they dry out, they will kind of glue themselves to the um, metal washers, and then you'll have degraded drag performance. So that's what you're seeing here. All right, so every other one is an eared washer. The eared washers have the two tabs on them 
two tabs sit in the little cuts in the um, the main gear. Go back and do a little bit more with that grease. Work it in with my glove hand. Move that over. Time for a round one. This is why I lay them out so that uh, I don't have to constantly go back and recheck this to figure out where I was in the process with them. All right, work the grease in on that one. This is the last of the ear washers. So this design goes back to the 40s. The uh, this the gearing uh, the drag washers have changed from a, a thicker drag washer to the uh, more common set here. And actually, it could be upgraded if it, if you needed to. You could take the old ones out, put the new ones in. Just putting the cap washer back on and the ferrule. And we're about ready to reinstall now. So there's no broken line that I can tell of. The reel has been cleaned. It's been lubed where it needs to be lubed. We'll put a little bit more on that eccentric uh, pre-spool release there. And uh, cleaned it up, lubed all the important parts. We're gonna go, re go, go ahead and reinstall now. So what I'm reaching for are the two springs that go on the yoke. The yoke controls the movement in and out of the spool gear. So the spool gear can uh, allow for free spool when it's retracted. And it's retracted by pressure from the, uh, uh, the jack. Okay, so I've lubed the spool gear. You'll notice the spool gear has a notch. The notch faces out to engage the spool. I've checked all the teeth, I've lubed the spool gear. So I'm going to sit those on top of the two springs. I'm going to compress those. And then I'm going to take the jack, which holds that down, and complete that gear side assembly. The next thing I want to do then is reset the anti-reverse dog. I take one of the fully threaded screws, set it into the uh, the hole. Take the full assembly now of the, the gearing and turn that partially. So I bring it over the top and I let it rest on top of the spool gear. And I'm going to put the anti reverse. Oops, I missed the when I had the screw secured. I didn't. I'm going to grab the anti reverse dog. The notch goes up. It sits on the back of the uh, the sleeve. We're going to go grab that little spring that we had. And it's a spring, so you have to be careful when you go to reinstall this now. And that spring sits in the groove, the notch to the side plate. And again, be careful, that spring can still shoot. Then you complete by turning the bridge plate the rest of the way so that the spool gear comes through. And just a couple of partial turns on that until we get the other bridge plate screws set. Again, the partially threaded goes up top. You saw the springs that ride on that. That gets connected into the side plate. And again, I haven't brought all of these back down fully tightened yet. I go in an X pattern, I go right to left up to down until I have all four of these seated, which is right now, and the fourth one should be seated. Then I finish tightening them up again, reversing that sequence, X pattern, low to high. That's just to keep proper tension and torque on the entire bridge plate. And also some of these have some pretty tight tolerances there in terms of the uh, the uh, lining up of the holes. I'm just testing it now. It seems to be working fine the way it should. There's an oil spout here so we can put a drop of oil into that. That's the basic maintenance uh, side of this. I'm going to go ahead, now that we have the furrow on, we can reverse the process. We can put the star drag on this side, tightening it down. And it's nice when you're working with a relatively new reel. 
uh, because it makes it easier all around. All right, so now we have that in. As long as we have that in, now we can go ahead and put the trim ring back on. Lining the holes up. Eventually we get this right. Not yet. So I guess if I had just moved one to the left instead of all the way to the right. And then I have one more piece here, which is the harness holder for the reel. You're going to strap your, your safety harness onto it, onto the rod. It'll go there. Okay, and then we just put this back together by inserting the spool, lining up that uh, the holes. And just like the other one, I, I kind of like to do this by going in an X pattern rather than going around in a circle. And I like to partially tighten as opposed to fully tighten. So I'll go top, bottom, until all five of these screws are uh, set. And then you go back and tighten them all down once you you have them all caught. So the H2, like I said, it, this design has been around forever. They seem to have changed the... Uh, I'm just having a little bit of trouble getting these screws started here for whatever reason. I can use a centering pin. I don't think I have the, uh, the metal side plate on properly. I have to. Always something. Okay, we'll get it. It's just a matter of patience. There we go. For whatever reason, I was just uh, misaligned a little bit, just enough. So, uh, they've changed the outsides. That's what they've done. They really haven't changed the internals to the reel. It's been a great reel for a long time. It's a big game fishing reel. Uh, very popular with tuna. Very popular with uh, shark. I'm going to be sharking on the East Coast here. Uh, very durable in design and in parts and manufacture. Uh, just a nice reel all around. Uh, so if you're thinking about one of these and just wanted to take a look at what this reel was made of, this, uh, this video will help you as well uh, in terms of seeing the design features, uh, the quality of materials. They are still a high quality reel. It's a good value for the price. I think, uh, if I recall, they're selling just around $100, maybe a couple of dollars more. And uh, they're going to last a long time if properly serviced, which is exactly what we did here. I showed you how to service this. And uh, parts are going to be available for a long time. They've been available on all the old Senators. Uh, as I mentioned, if you have a very early Senator, you're going to find uh, asbestos drag washers in there and a three combination. Uh, those can be upgraded to the seven combination that you just saw on this reel. All right, so the customer's got a freshly oiled and lubed and inspected reel. There was no evidence there whatsoever of it being a, uh, a line break in it, but uh, I got this backwards anyway. Uh, if uh, for whatever reason, if he thought that there was something wrong, he did the best thing, which was to bring it down. That, uh, that little washer goes underneath the star drag. So this is a good time to tell you if you if you don't uh, work on reels frequently and you don't uh, have a good memory like mine seems to be failing today, uh, take pictures along the way. Those uh, pictures will tell you the sequence and the sort that you took them out in. And uh, if you wind up with extra parts and pieces in your parts bucket there, 
then uh, you can always go back and reference it and find out where that piece came from. Okay, well, once we do that, we just tighten down that uh, handle nut and put a little cap over it. And again, I guess you got to play with it a little bit to line that up so that you can get the set screw in there on the cap. That should do it. And uh, if you take those pictures, it's a good reference point and a good reminder as to how you did this. So we got a, a relatively new reel. It's working well. There's no evidence of a skip in this one whatsoever now. It's been properly serviced and it's, uh, it's ready to serve the customer for another, uh, another season or so. So I, I hope you've enjoyed that. I apologize for some of those uh, little pauses in there as we had to go correct some things. But uh, that's part of the, uh, the art of fixing the wheels from time to time things get out of alignment. But uh, if you've enjoyed this, I ask you to like it on YouTube. If you uh, want to see more of these, I ask you to subscribe to my channel. So again, thank you for viewing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.